comes the three. Death and whole culture have been dominating lately. Hip hop is in its own bubble. And the only people that rock with hip hop music is hip hop heads. And people that understand the craft. That's why they coming out. They feel safe. You don't feel safe going to a, a little blah blah concert. It's funny because they telling you not to feel safe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you get there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. They actually say you not supposed to feel safe. You shouldn't have came. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Either that or or the kids from this generation that's a big influence is is subconsciously brainwashing people with this low vibrational music and sending messages to their conscience that these kids ain't paying attention to. That's really some messed up stuff, bro. You know, I ain't finna go down the rabbit hole, but there's a lot of satanic industry shit going mm-hmm. on and people just blah, blah, blah in it. And then they all I can say is they're going to figure it out later on. They're going to wake up one day, five years from now, and be like, you know what? I was into some shit and didn't realize as much shit as I was into because I was listening to this shit and I was a fan of some shit. Now I'm listening to this shit. What the fuck was I thinking? You wasn't thinking. They was programming, G. You know what I'm saying? It's real, bro. But yeah, but hip hop, man, I listen to underground shit. R and B, I listen to like a lot of. Uh, like I like Thundercat. Shit. Uh, some girl named Moonshine, Moon Sun. It's like this white chick from the West Coast, and she sing with a whisper, but she got so much soul, like she raw. <laughs> and then there's this other uh, white chick named Atlanta Royale. She pretty dope. Um. Yeah, it's like the people that understand soul music and real hip hop culture is not us no more. It's like we gave it away for 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 the streets, bro. And the people that really care about it, believe it or not, is other races, bro. That's really more to this shit than than we are as as just black people when we created this shit. But we don't care. Money ain't in it. I know so many people that used to do beats and shit, but they threw it all away because there wasn't no money in it. They wasn't in it for the culture. They was in it for the money. And when they realized that they weren't making the money, they was like, man, y'all still doing that, man. What you need to do is get some bread. You know, man, Man, that old rap shit, man, your ass still chill, man. You need to get... And it's like I wasn't in it never for that. Yeah, I want a career. Yeah, I could have went the other way a long time ago and got on my feet. But that shit ain't me. You know what I'm saying? So I turned down a lot of shit because there's a lot of shit I ain't want to do. And a lot of niggas that I thought was with it, I come to realize they was with it when the getting was good. And when the getting wasn't good, it wasn't good enough for nobody. And fuck Sometimes that shit. Sometimes it's like that, man. Across the board with every damn thing. You know yeah. What I'm ain't nobody got no loyalty or no gumption or no dedication or no loyalty to nothing but money. Money is these people God, bro. And that's some fucked up shit. Mm-hmm. You know? No doubt, no doubt. We can uh, we can switch it up just a little bit. I wanted to ask you also. Um, well, we can go ahead. And, we can go ahead and move forward a little bit. What uh, what you using to make your beats now? Whatever. I can, no, this bullshit. Uh, like so, what's your? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, man. Um, I got a plastic bucket, like two tablespoons. I just sit on the floor with a microphone. <laughs> so I know you heard this. I mean, ain't that the quintessential fucking? What's your what's your pro, what's your uh, process? What's your musical creation process? No, for real, for real. Um, I use the MP. I'm still on the MP. I never got off the MPC. Um, I done used them all from the '60 to the live. Um, head of Renaissance. Just stopped using that, only because. Akaya stopped really kind of uh, supporting the software for it and shit. I like that one the most because it reminded me of the old, the layout was like the old MPC 60 and shit. So you upgrade your computer, run the sound software, ain't compatible with nothing no more. So it's like, so I got an MPC one. Right. You know, I use that. Uh, I use uh, Reason sometimes, and I use Ableton. Or I use all of them at the same time, or I use all of them, or I use them separate because I get bored. No doubt. I'll be wanting to do beats all day on reasons. I go a month on reasons, then I'll be like, you know what? <sighs> i get on the MP and I'll be on there for like a few months, then I'll be like, you know what? 
All right, let me get on reasons, man. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just to keep me fresh, man. I keep jumping from one to the other. But now, I use the MPC with reasons. I do all my shit on re, on the MP. No, with Ableton. I do everything on um MPC, like my chops and shit, we'll walk the wham. And then I'll fly it all to um, Ableton and finish it up in there. Add your musical instruments and shit. Instruments, like, drops, uh, all that, yeah. change pitch without no artifacts, warp it, all kind of, man. Ableton is top shelf shit, bro. No doubt. Which, uh, what version you working with? 10. Dope, dope. I got 11, but I like 10. No doubt. You know, 12 about to drop. Don't care. I'm sticking with 10. You might, you might <laughs> want to check it out. Nah, it see, that's the thing, though. Ableton is really a, um, a dance music based software. So it reasons is too. So a lot of the stuff that Ableton do is really like the instruments, the the, the factory sounds and shit. All that shit is for EDM and trance and, and techno and stuff. I do hip hop, so I don't use a third of that shit. You know what I'm saying? So I don't need all the bells and whistles. No bell, I'm a no simple bell. guy. It do what I need it to do. And I record on Pro Tools. Pro Tools is my 24 track, real to real. 48 track, real to real. That's all Pro Word. Tools is. That's all I use it for. But my music, even though I can record on Ableton, I just prefer to just be musical because there's so many options. But for me to jump from one to the other to the other, keep dropping money on the newest, the newest, the newest, for what? I'm going to do the same thing on that that I'm doing on 10. So what's the... How you finding your samples nowadays? You still going through wax, so you dig through like no. hard drive. Look, bro, download and stuff. <laughs> me and Chainsaw had so many damn records, so much wax. That shit was a headache, bro. That shit was about furniture. That shit was our furniture. I used to sleep. My my bed was on crazy records. Like everything was records. It was just too much, too heavy, too much looking at around. You could never get enough. You always buy more. It was just too damn much. It was just too many records, bro. And once YouTube went crazy, I've been on, honestly, everything I ever had plus is on YouTube. All the records I ever had from my rap collection to all my uh, samples that I used to collect to my beats, my brain beats, all that shit, is literally on YouTube. So you just get a good motherfucking converter and a good interface and get a clean signal yeah. and there you go. You still going through some of your old collections? You still got access to some of those old records? Hell no. My mama threw everything away. Damn. My mama threw away real to reals. She threw away my history, bro. But to my, you know, I, you know, I ain't had no way to take that shit. You know, I was, this is a long story, but. Yeah, my mom threw away all that shit, so. All right, all right. Oh, was that? I had uh, my cousin David. I went to uh, Sullivan, and uh, his dad was a little bit, I guess he was retired, call it whatever. And uh, one day I went over there, man, just whatever. I don't know what the fuck I was doing, some asshole shit, looking through his dad's shit, whatever the fuck I was doing. And uh, I ended up asking him. Yeah. Okay, my bad. Uh, I ended up asking him, uh, "What's up with these records in here?" And uh, I don't know. He was just like, "Yeah, man, he he's not doing anything with them." And so I just had convinced him to bring over, man, probably like two crates of records. But I specifically remember looking at the back of a Tribe record and then seeing the name of the sample and then seeing Maynard Ferguson. Like I just knew the name. So right. I told him I was like, "Bring all those." Like if it wasn't for him, man, I probably even would have started making beats for. Uh, he just gave me a free two crates of straight dope jazz records like Miles Davis. I can't... I never was that much of a wax aficionado. I just would look for the dope sample. I didn't get into the names of who was playing to the instruments too right. much shit. But yeah, when I had to move, I lost a big chunk of records that I sampled over and over and over and over. Man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I can relate to you. And that's the thing though, man. I was so into digging that when I lost everything, it was just like... It was so messed up, I ain't want to go back because it brought up like bogus memories. Like, man, I used to have this, uh, you know, it just <laughs> right. pissed me off because it was thrown away. I was like, I'm just done. I ain't never fuck with records ever again because I can't, I can't take another loss like yeah, that. Gee, that was right. too bad. And I was deep into it. Like, you would go um, sample shopping, read the credits, and you will go about who's playing. Creed and Taylor. Okay, he produced this. It's got to be good. Right. Oh, 
Ron Carter, okay. Stanley Clark, okay. Sliding the family stone with Larry Graham or without. Without, wow. hmm, this right. one he was fucking with the drum machine. Let's see if we can get a, a, a rim shot off that. You know, I was deep into that digging in the crazy shit, but wow, that's what's up. but when my records got tossed out and I went home and I seen little kids in uh, Adam B. Wells playing Frisbee with all the records because they were just all over the back oh, yeah. in the projects. Damn. They were just slinging them up for the yeah. kids was having a ball. Right. With all the Damn. records, I was like, oh, God, no. Oh, yeah. yeah, man. Real to reels with old early early recordings of stuff I produced back in like ninety one, ninety two. She threw all that shit away. I got a good one for you, man. We can switch it up a little bit. No, uh, nah, I'm out finna cry, bro. No, I'm just playing. No, <laughs> <laughs> Not even like you know, just uh, just trying to keep it comfortable. Um, what was you doing during the pandemic, man? Did that shit really affect you? Or did you just end up making the shit load more beats? Man, I was working. Back. It's like it never happened because I was a, um, what you call them uh, workers? Uh, where you, you know, like I worked at like well, Walgreens. Was essential or some shit. Essential, <laughs> essential worker. So I was going to work every day just because yeah. we sold masks and motherfucking um, and hand sanitizer that considered our job essential work. And it didn't affect me. Um, as far as my every day, I seen what it did, and I seen how paranoid. It affected me because I couldn't believe people were so damn gullible. I was mm-hmm. like, niggas, you really, really, like, you finna take the shot? Like, they just right. made this shit. Like, you crazy? Like, so you ain't take the jab. Hell no, I ain't take that shit, bro. Hell no. No, sir, bro. Yeah, me neither. I can't do that. I knew it was something to it. Like, well, questionable ass ingredients and shit. You know? Oh, I need five jabs now. Right. And then it was like, I ain't, I'm far from woke, one of the woke guys. You know, I'm right, G, you know what I'm saying? I ain't on that woke shit, but I ain't slow. Yeah. Like, God damn, bro, I know sense. something up with this. Right. Like, this ain't none common of this sense, making man. sense. Ain't none of this yeah. right, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, and be real, I think I had caught COVID prior to when it was called COVID because we all got sick and we was like, we ain't got no cold. What the fuck is this? This ain't the flu, but we sick as hell in this motherfucker. What's going on? And then it passed, and life was regular. It was like, no big deal. And they said, you know, COVID. And I was like, I think that's what we had, G. You know what I'm saying? And um, I don't, you know, I got immune system. We killed that shit naturally. Mm-hmm. You know, I always been, I've been on the little sea moss shit anyway, so I was kind of ready for it a little bit. Um... With the exception of me drinking the way I used to, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. Yeah. During COVID, man, I was just making music and keeping going to work. So you stayed outside because you was working, basically. Yeah, I was outside, but I was really inside because wasn't nobody else outside. (laughs) (laughs) I was the only one outside and shit like, the fuck? Yeah, I think it's interesting, though, the people that actually still kept going to work, those are the people that complain about the pandemic the least to be perfectly honest like because they didn't they weren't forced to stay inside and go fucking stir crazy and it's funny the people that complain about the pan are the most privileged motherfuckers can sit at the house and get the unemployment you ain't look at the statements it's tripped out yeah the only thing people complain about is still having to be out there to get the money and i totally understand there was a big disparage and disconnect between people that should have been able to sit up and then some of the people the older people that got sick got sick having to continue working yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, they did they did a number, bro. Is that that was a pandemic, bro. All that yeah. shit was about to say. To see how that was that was like the underplay for some bigger shit, bro. They just went that was that was a test, bro, cuz it's going I got a funny feeling it's going to be some shit. It's going to be absolutely. some worse shit. Yeah, absolutely. So, motherfuckers, all I can tell y'all is hold y'all head and stay in your ground. Y'all got an idea how it's mm-hmm. about to go down. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, they finna pull another they motherfucking the COVID, internet, bro. They, they finna can, pull another COVID. They flip the internet, bro. And they finna shut down the power with all this shit and mm-hmm. restart it under motherfucking strict guidelines and rules Boy, and regulations. This internet go all we going back to 10,000 B.C. Niggas no, we ain't. Out here, out here walking along for The people ways. that should be able to survive, I kind of predict, won't. I think it's going to be some panic like a motherfucker, man. Because I think it's going to be bad for the generation born into this shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because they going to be the ones that's going to be looking to us 
for the answer, they don't just straight up lose their motherfucking mind. That's a real right. good point. That's All a real right. good point. Now, this was going to happen. We still got our sense. Right. See, this was going to happen. CD's going to start selling again. Mm. <laughs> the music going to come back because ain't nobody going to have a way to motherfucking enjoy themselves but to go back to hardware. Mm-hmm. So a lot of shit that we weren't able to, uh, that, that phased out because of the internet, if they do shut this shit down, it's going to go back to, man, I got a copy of this. DVD is going to sell again because people go, entertainment is besides drugs, alcohol, and all that goofy ass shit. Entertainment is the only other escape from uh, fucking uh, dealing with reality, bro. Yeah. So people going to buy CDs again. Well, let's people say going fabricated to buy reality. Fabricated reality, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, real good word. Fabricated reality. So no records, wax going to sell again. CDs going to sell again. Movies, physical movies. Shit that's physical going to sell again because they ain't going to be at the touch of a button no more. Right. So people be ready. Own shit, for real, yeah. For real. So the motherfuckers with sense, a lot of us black brothers going to really have to stand up to create motherfucking order in the midst of chaos because these new niggas is going to lose their shit. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. So if we need motherfucking leaders and all that black man stand up, how can we help the youth? Oh, y'all finna have y'all turn to really show because we're going to mm-hmm. have to get together and get these motherfuckers in order because we really going to be all we got when they shut this shit down like it mm-hmm. used to be. Right. How would you say you've adapted to how things are looking right now with what you've been doing? Have you made any changes to how you've always done things, or is there a way you feel you could put a wrinkle in some things to, you know what I'm saying, help you benefit of, of, of the knowledge that you have, the experience you got? As far as music? Yeah, like, but like not just specifically with music. Like, are there any advancements? Is there anything technological with marketing, social media? Anything that you see working? Something that's worked for you maybe recently? Uh, I could say whatever's... Whatever work or, or, oh, let me see how I got Whatever's been working, it's too late to try to figure it out now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can join in, but if you miss the motherfucking jump, you're a little too late. Um, TikTok is already a weird, it's oversaturated. Music, F, 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 Spotify, iTunes, Everything is oversaturated. So if you ain't get in on the ground floor of that shit and made the most of it when it was possible at the gate, you just joined in the company. I hope you get noticed now. So what only thing I would change or if I have adapted, it wasn't really nothing to adapt to. I just missed the ball or I wasn't ready. You know what I'm saying? Because it's too late now to try to adapt to anything. It's already over with. Shit is like the, the crypto thing. It's flooded now. If you ain't jumping that shit when that shit first took off, you kind of just riding the wave now because you missed the big boat. Now, I will jump in and say Bitcoin, at least, while it's hot, is something that is never the concept of compound, like compounding your money and then compounding your money with the Bitcoin on the same platform. That shit is very, very powerful. You can yeah. have like a 5% APY on your bread just for having your cash on there. Yeah. And Bitcoin, if you buy the same amount, let's say you get like $10 a week, at the end of the day, even if it crashes, you still got the Bitcoin. It's always going to go back up. Now, whether somebody can afford to leave their money, some shit, that's not worth anything. Like, that's always the issue. Right. But consistently putting money into it on top of your cash, dude, that shit is dangerous, man. Compound interest is dangerous. Yeah. You always get it with it. I just wanted to, that was my little two cents. And you're right, but the thing I'm, the point I'm making is, just like Early marketing and too. social social media and all that, if you ain't really take advantage of it on the ground floor when it first started, you kind of just running with yeah. the dogs now, G, because you kind of missed the boat. Yeah, so it's like, what could I change if I wanted to? You know, so sure. Unless we create our own motherfucking something and create a new wave and... And that's my hard shit to do, too. Yeah. Because you got to be, like, overly genius to come up with something to compete in this world we live in now. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, what if we had to start doing sample packs or midi packs back in the 90s? How big would we be now? Man. 
I mean, there were several packs of shit around in the 90s. Great point. Yeah. But mm-hmm. MIDI packs, though. What if we right. had the technology to actually put MIDI, um, MIDI files on motherfucking CD and they was able to load up the CD and drag the MIDI files to a like earlier version of Fruit Loops and then do what they want to do. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like we missed the boat on a lot of shit and there's right. nothing we can really do different. Like right. either you in on it or you not. No doubt, no doubt. So that's a hard question to answer to be honest with you. So tell us about uh, what you got going on right now, this project you're working on. Well, right now, I got this album out. I Stand Alone. It's an instrumental project. It wasn't really meant to be wrapped off. It was meant to just bump some shit, ride. You know what I'm saying? You get tired of words. You can just listen to some uh, hip-hop music. That's all it was. It's grimy. You know what I'm saying? It's some what I consider hip-hop grimy b-boy shit. Um, yeah, and um, it's out now on all platforms. Um, did rec release party on the ninth. Thanks to everyone that came out. It was pretty cool. It was dope. Um, you know, and um, the record's out on all platforms through Bangladesh Records. Shout out to my man, Ch- um, Tego. You know, um, one day I was frustrated with all this shit, and I had this idea, and I um, hit up Tego because he runs Bangladesh Records. And Bangladesh is a techno record label. Primarily, it's all techno. So my idea was techno house instrumentals. All they, it's all instrumentals anyway. It's just house music. It's just techno. It's just beats, no words. So I hit him up with the idea with that, you know, ideology like, bro, you putting out instrumentals. So what if you put me out on your label, but it's all instrumentals though? Mm -mm. And he thought about it and said, you know what? Yeah, I'll sign you for that. No doubt. And he signed me up for that. Just the idea. I don't need to, he know my pedigree and all that. And he just kind of went off that. But the idea, I think, is what kind of shocked his uh, interest because he was like, well, we do just put out instrumentals. And I am a part of hip-hop, like, too. You know, I'm mostly techno, but I am a part of the yeah. Chicago hip-hop scene. And people know, right, it make beats. And he gave me the shot. So here we are, December 9th, uh, the, uh, December 12th. The record 12th, dropped on right. the 12th. And from what I see, it's doing good. If you ain't got it. I stand alone, ride one on all platforms. Fuck with your boy, shit. All right, how many joints you got on there? Eight. Right. I just put together eight, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's a techno uh, record label shit. They do singles because it's house music. You know, it's for the DJ. So they do like A side, B side singles. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe three songs because it's techno. So I just kind of didn't want to just flood a project with so many records on an instrumental right. album. I like four of them. I mean, eight of them, you know. Yeah. The way you said eight, like, I didn't even put ten on there. I put eight. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> you know an EP, yeah. man. Just right. kept it nice and smooth. Gee, I ain't want to, like, go crazy. I really just want to see how this work out. Should I keep going? Should, you know. But the way the response I'm getting, oh, I, got, I got another one in the vault already ready. Man, that's how you do it. That's how you yeah. do it. Yeah, so I'm ready for another one. Um, I'm just going to take my time, do some more videos for this project, and keep promoting it and see how far it goes. And, and I'm going to probably do another one. No doubt, no doubt. Man, um, for anybody that's not familiar, man, you want to um, you wanna let anybody in on your pedigree, Apex? You know what I'm saying? So you bring the homie Apex with you? Oh, uh, yeah, this is my man Apex. You know what I'm saying? Sound Scandal Music Group, artist, producer. You know what I'm saying? He with me. You know, SSLG and shit, but okay. yeah. Y'all came up together? Kind of. Kind of. A little bit? Kind of, yeah. We, we, go, we go back. We go back quite a bit. Uh, when did we meet? Like in the uh, early 90s? Yeah, it was around like Dunbar, 90s. around high school. Yeah, Dunbar. Right. You know what I'm saying? We both went to Dunbar Vocational. Yeah. Yeah, I got I got, I got up out of there 86, though. I went into the military, so I had to come you know, come back in 90, 91, and then I got back, you know what I'm saying, on it. I had my own group. And um, then I started running back into Ride and uh, Kingdom and them, and we started hanging out. You know what I'm saying? I was still trying to kind of like feel my way into it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because I had originally been like a poet. And um, I started rapping when I was like, started high school. You did spoken word too? Yeah. Uh, I haven't done it in a while though, because I've just been, you know what I'm saying, paying games strictly on rhyming. For sure. you know, so, I think everybody that wrote poetry 
try a spoken word at some point. That's why I asked you, like, if you really was doing artistry, you really was trying to, like, you'll go to a show and then be like, what the fuck? Four motherfuckers really uh, doing that shit? Like, it was a big thing. Yeah. Yeah, but, um... Uh, I mean, cut you off. Go ahead. But, you know, uh, like I said, you know, I had my own group, uh... And my group originally was No Apex, but the group disbanded, so I took the name onto myself. Okay. So, so my name, my, my stage name, and my producer name, because I, I'm kind of like a protege under under his wing, you know what I'm saying? As far as the production and stuff, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's No Apex. That's, that's uh, that's my moniker. That's what I go by. You know what I'm saying? With people in the hood though, they call me Apex for short. You know what I'm saying? I came up with the Apex because it's like I try to write at the highest. You know what I'm saying? Pedigree, the highest point, you know what I'm saying, and I can. You know, no apex, you running through that motherfucker top speed. Right, right. I'm, no I'm not playing with it. It's like it's like, you know, because because my mother got me started writing at an early age, at six. I was writing poems when I was eight, so it's like, I don't play when the pen touch the pad. It's like I'm not gonna say some weak shit. You know what I'm saying? It's bars or nothing for me. It's it's substance or nothing for me. You know what I'm saying? It's got to have substance. When y'all start rocking out, was it on beats or was it because you had bars and you had beats or vice versa or both? Uh, shit. Uh, 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 well, we had lost touch for a while. Then when I ran into him, he was going by L.O. He had a project he was uh, working on and wanted to finish, so he came to me to finish up the beats for him. I finished up the beats, recorded, produced them. Then I wind up designing the artwork Produce, printing the CDs, putting the artwork on. I wind up manufacturing. I was a one stop shop for them. Yeah. And that's how we got back in tune this shit. Right. Yeah. So it really come down to getting shit done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's put it out. That's dope. That's real dope. Yeah. But we always been kind of tight. We fell out for a minute due to my bullshit. And then we got back up uh, like maybe a couple of years ago. And we've been work rocking on the music ever since. Man, that's what's up, man. Ain't yeah. shit else to do, man. Yeah. That's up, that's up. I was about to say, yeah, man, uh, we got a little clip. I got a clip um, from P. Miller. Uh, I'm going to play it for y'all so you can see it. Oh, shout out. What up, D? I want to know, like, why, why, what, why? Wow, tell shout us why out D. Miller. That. Tell us why wow, he was saying he's the most authentic. <laughs> why, why would, tell us why he was saying that. First of all, shout out D. Miller, man. That's, that's, that's my name, man. No word up. Appreciate that, G. Uh, yeah, that, that was heavy, G. Wow. Um, yeah, fuck up. Um, yeah, shout out D. Uh, you said why you say that. Like, why? What made him say that? What was the, what was the you think, the experience to him? He make him say like, man, this is the most hip hop shit all I right. ever seen in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is the all I can say when I met D, we all went to Dunbar. Shit, fuck up. Uh, we went to Dunbar, um, and I was I was just overly infatuated with the culture. Like I was super, like graffiti, break dance, rapping. DJ and B boy writer, and he seen it. He was like, This motherfucker is really living this shit. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I was. That's all I had. Then, uh, when I met D and I heard him rap, I was like, Okay, this motherfucker can rap. You know what I'm saying? Man, he dope. Uh, 
come on through the Chainsaw Crib, because Chainsaw Crib was like headquarters and shit. So every day we would cut school after school. You know, we was at Chain Crib, because, you know, he was a little older than us and shit, but, you know, he, you know, he was, he had the turns. He was not equipped at his crib. So I brought D over to Chain Crib, and then when he came over there, I was like, see, I told you, bro, Chain had, like, all the crazy records, turntable set up, drum machine, posters all on the wall. We all tag, had a makeshift um, little mic booth in the closet. He was like, man, this is the most hip-hop shit. And I'm like, D, I told you, I told you. And uh, as we all grew up and was doing this shit, going to, like, hip-hop meets and shit, and everybody knew me, and, and, and he was new to it, and he seen how hip-hop everybody was that we was going around, and how cool I was with everybody. I guess he looked at it like, damn, Ryan is a real fucking B Street ass. Like, this nigga is, <laughs> this nigga is Lee from B Street in a flash. Like, <laughs> who knew? Like, from the projects. Right. Like, yeah. hey, he do graffiti for real. Hey, he DJ for real. Hey, he make beats for real. Like, I was doing, I was like, a tri a jack you know, I was doing everything right. back in the day. And whether I was bad at it or good, that's up. That's that's in the air to be older or some shit. But I was into everything, and I guess D C that and guess considered me like ain't nobody motherfucker down. Like yeah, Kingdom rap, yeah, Chain rap and DJ. But this nigga Ryan do all. He living, you know. So he living this shit for real. Like if he ain't around us, that's as our team. He on the north side, in them um, spray painting in the train yards or some shit. Cause this nigga's into this shit for real. So maybe that's what it was, but. Back when me and D was um, tight, you know what I'm saying, in our high school years, shit, I was into this hip hop shit. That shit saved my life. That's all I knew. I was airbrushing in Jewtown. Um, shit, I was doing this shit. I mean, you know. So shout out to D. That was big. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, no doubt, man. If you got a, if you got any uh, statements, man, like, man, how would you, uh, how would you, what would. Uh, Hate the whole. What would be some advice you give? But like, man, shorty's needed, man. Like, what would you uh, tell somebody that actually has it together, that has the followers? You know what I mean? That has paid for a little bit of payola, some marketing. You know, knows how to get in contact with the DJs, is making the right uh, connections. Like, what was just real quick pat on the back? Like, I see you, shorty. Yeah, uh, all I can say is uh, these young guys, these new guys in that situation. <laughs> Once you get in the door, I'm pretty sure you got in the door kind of being the best at the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure um, you got notarized for being better doing the same shit as the other person that's doing the exact same shit. Because that's the world we live in now. Everything is the same. It's just who, I mean, who who's the better Chief Keith this week or who's the better Ice Spice or, Gorilla or whatever this week. Because it's all the same shit. So all I'm saying is not knocking that. It got you in the door. You in there. You actually got some money. Now that you in there, if you care, if you just rapping the rap, keep doing what you're doing. More power to you. Get your bread. But if you care about the art, if you into the culture and you really give a fuck about what we as black people created, what we turn what we made something out of nothing with you know what i'm saying if you care about the culture my advice is now that you in the game find your own lane before it's too late find your own lane identify with your own shit study mm -hmm. the motherfucking culture stop rapping the rap actually develop a skill set with the rap that's right. not what everybody else doing find your own persona your, your own, own voice your own voice man you know what I'm saying? That's all the advice I can give it. And, and take advantage of your opportunity by finding your own voice and making it yours. Because now you're where you are. You really ain't got shit to lose. But I slow down on some money. Look, this this what I'm saying. I've been broke. I've been poor. I ain't broke. I've been poor all my life. You know what I'm saying? If I wind up with any kind of money, I already know what it's like to be poor. So it won't affect me to lose bread. You know what I'm saying? So why not take a chance on being an individual? Why not carve your own lane? Why not um, live by your rules or say fuck them people? You know what I'm saying? Why not stand up strong for motherfuckers that's totally been with you? 
You know what I'm saying from day one. Why not hold them down once you get to a level? Because if you was already poor, you ain't really got nothing, nothing to lose because you know what the bottom is. Right. And you can fucking doubt. So mm-hmm. the sellout ain't really worth it. It ain't worth it to lose your integrity or compromise yourself and your soul where you can't even look in the mirror or you just got to grin and bear and be like, well, I did what I had to do. That's a cop out. Right. No, nigga, you ain't have to do that. You ain't have to do that, but if you got in position where you motherfucking got money, don't forget where you came from. Fucking save your bread and play the game to your advantage and find yourself, find your voice, find your sound, find your lane, and try to be original and set another trend in this shit so everybody can stop doing the same thing. Make it, my whole thing was, I want to be in the game because when I'm sampling everybody else, I want somebody to sample me one day because I did something genuine where people like, I got to fuck with that. Uh, right. As rappers, you should want to be a rapper that you went so far that people want to sound like you. Hell, everybody want to sound like Drake because he did his own thing, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody want to sound like the drill rappers because they did their own thing. That shit ain't hip-hop. It's good rap. It's rap music. They did their own thing, and they created something. So, y'all, if y'all get a chance, do your own thing and create something. Well, y'all got the chance and the money. And, and, and be careful of the company you keep. Motherfuckers is back door. You gonna sell you out with the quickness. Mm-hmm. And motherfucking um, shady shit is running rampant. So watch mm-hmm. your motherfucking self. Watch these people. Don't take no drinks at no parties. Don't do shit. They go home. Fuck these motherfuckers. That's what I say to these young niggas. And find your own lane and don't lose yourself in this shit. Right. Real talk. Word. That's what's up, man. All right, man. That's what's going on, man. Y'all want to give out any shout outs, man, or any final statements? Yeah, yeah. Double S, Sound Scandal Music Group. Shout out to my nigga Dark Horse. Chato. Yeah, Chato Vato. Motherfucker Tada Casu, X Men. Shout out to all my X Men brothers. J All Day. Shout out to J All Day. Motherfucking, uh, yeah, shout out to all my X-Men brothers, Source. Uh, shout out to my man Prism. Uh, shout out to my um, Tattoo Keo in New York. Shout out to Severe Staff, Stain Rock. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to all my X-Men. There's a million of us. X-Men worldwide. Shout out to my family, uh, X-Men. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to my boy, um, Doc Maninoff, man. Keep doing numbers, boy. You know what I'm saying? Did a lot of work with him. Shout out to my boy, Jizzle. Uh, Villanova, shout out to my boy Heat Detector. Uh, shout out to everybody that's rocking with me. You know what I'm saying? And much love to everybody out there that's doing this real shit. You know what I'm saying? 